This is the Alfa Giulia Sprint, one of my absolutely favorite Italian coupes. Around 225,000 of these were built, when Alfa, of course, was independent, independent of Fiat. They were built in Varese, and they were based on the shortened floor pan of the Berlina, the saloon. And it's a very elegant, short, light car, which, of course, has a fabulous four-cylinder double overhead cam engine, which makes a gorgeous noise. I mean, who needs a six-cylinder or a V8 when you've got one of these? The Giulia Sprint was, of course, designed by Giorgetto Di Giaro, who was only 17 years old when he designed this car. He just arrived at Bertone. Of course, he went on to design the Volkswagen Golf Mark I, Lotus Esprit, the DeLorean. But this was his very first car, and I think it's fascinating, because it shows such maturity, and, and it's such a classic, and yet it has real innovation. The innovation comes from the wraparound windscreen, which gives you a fabulous view if you're the passenger or the driver of the car, and of course, the famous step front, which goes backwards, slanted backwards, the, the beautiful little heart-shaped alpha grille, but of course the, the full width of the car is the front with the headlights incorporated into it. And I think that was only on concept cars before this car arrived. So it's, it's a true classic. And in fact, although it was built from 1963 to 1977, it hasn't dated at all. It's still just as fresh now as it was when Giorgetto designed it. The Alfa Romeo Giulia Sprint, the 105 and 115 series, Alfa Romeo used motor racing to promote sales, and they were incredibly successful. Uh, they won the European Touring Car Championship in 66, 67, 69, and 1970. And the drivers were amazing. They were the Dutchman, Toyni Hesemans. They were Jochen Rint, the Formula One driver, who used this car to get uh, time in the tracks, and in those days, of course, Formula One drivers used to drive sports cars as well. And the Alfa GTA, of course, was, was really special. It wasn't built uh, by Alfa Romeo in Milano or in Varese or in uh, Portello. It was built by the legendary Carlo Chitti of Auto Delta. Famously, Carlo Chitti of the shark nose Formula One Ferrari, perhaps the most beautiful Formula One car ever built. Auto Delta took the the steel monocoque from Arese, from Alfa Romeo, and riveted in aluminium to make it much, much lighter. And that's what distinguishes the GTA, because it's got these funny bumps all the way down the drain channels above the windows, which signify that the aluminium's been riveted to the steel. Now, that didn't really make the car a lot stiffer, of course. Uh, in fact, they stopped doing it on the, the floor pan. Uh, but with a full roll cage, they had the stiffness that they needed. So they had a light, stiff car, typically weighing around about 1,600 pounds, perhaps even lighter. And that's what makes the car great. That fantastic, delicious engine, twin cam engine, and then this lightweight chassis. And I can see why Joachim Rint enjoyed driving this as, perhaps almost as much as his Formula One car. This particular Alpha GTA is the brilliant creation of Alpha Holics, a great workshop near Bristol. Alpha Holics is the joint achievement of two brothers, Max and Andrew Banks. It's a mecca for Alpha enthusiasts and one of the best places in the world to have a 1960s Alpha refreshed and renewed. With this car, Alpha Holics have decided to create their idea of the perfect version of the Alpha GTA. They call it the Alpha GTA R290. This is perhaps the car that Auto Delta would have made if they had the benefit of modern materials and technology. Andrew explains where they begin when bringing one of these classics into the modern age. 
We'll start off by taking the car right back to basics. So we uh, typically strip the car right back to a shell and we start again. And our philosophy is uh, re-engineering where appropriate. So we're looking to uh, bring the car into the modern age, but without detracting from the wonderful character of these cars. Well, one area is the suspension. Um, it's quite easy to make an improvement on the way the car handles and the way the car rides, but it's very important to retain the steering feel and the general feel of the car on the road, and, and that's what I think we've managed to achieve. Getting the maximum performance from the GTA R290 has seen the Banks brothers take weight loss to extremes. This car has bonded carbon doors, bonnet, and boot lid. To reduce the weight of the whole car, to 830 kilograms, around 1,800 pounds. With fuel injection and a modern ECU, the engine makes 240 brake horsepower. That gives the car a whopping 290 brake horsepower per tonne. And as you know, a performance car is all about power to weight. An aluminium radiator and a lightweight fuel tanker fitted, as well as a full roll cage made of T45 hardened and tempered carbon manganese steel allowing for thinner walls and tubes. High spec springs and dampers, bigger brakes, lightweight titanium wishbones on the front and a limited slip differential complete the improved specification. With this amount of love and attention to detail, the Alpha GTA laps the Nordschiefer in under eight minutes. Max tells me what it's like chasing a modern Porsche 911 GT3 around the Nürburgring. Going around the Nürburgring chasing that 911, uh, a lot of it was frustration of uh, not quite having the power to get past it down the straights, but then find that it was holding us up through the corners and, and under braking. And it's really when you follow these modern performance cars, you see how they struggle with the weight of the car. Um, and that struggles to make them stop, struggles to make them turn in the corner. It's where the Alpha feels so incredibly agile and competent in those areas. And that, that's what you see when you follow them. We bought the Alpha to export because it's the home of Lorna Doon, R.D. Blackmore's famous Victorian novel about the Doon gang who terrorised Somerset from the Badgeworthy Valley in Exmoor. And Lorna, of course, was, was kidnapped by them. She was, she was taken as a toddler from a very wealthy family by the gang and she grew up as one of the Doons. But Carver Doon knew she was going to inherit a massive amount of money but she fell in love with John Ridd, a local farmer. And in fact, they were going to get married in Orr Church. And Carverdoon realized that this was going to happen and came in and shot Lorna and then ran out of the church and ran into the, the wilds of the bogs of Exmoor. And in fact, fell down into a bog and was suffocated. And Lorna survived. I think the Alpha Romeo, Julia Sprint's a bit like Lorna because the Alpha's got real breeding. And just like Lorna, it's an aristocrat, but it's also got real guts. The Alpha Julia Sprint for me combines beauty and style. It symbolizes la dolce vita. And when you buy a classic car, passion always rules over sense, the heart, the heart rules over the mind. But the interesting thing about the Alpha is it's also practical. I mean, you can even fit the kids in the back. And of course, it's a real performer. I mean, they used to advertise them as the champion you drive to work. I think the Banks brothers, I think Max and and Andrew are absolutely right to dedicate their lives to this car, to be passionate, to be passionate about the Alpha. And um, there's a saying, isn't there? There's a saying that goes, without heart, cars are mere machines. 